Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Well, speaking of so excited, Rob, we have got a special guest on the telephonic device and you are going to do the honours and introduce the aforementioned person. Yes, I am genuinely excited because uh, we've been big fans of women's cricket for on this show and... Um, on uh, Sports Fix as well as during the week on other shows that this station does and uh, there's a young lady who's doing some really really good work at both the East Belmont Cricket Club where she plays juniors but also in the first 11 for the Geelong Cricket Club her name is Bronte Leishman she's joined us Bronte good morning good morning thank you very much for uh, for coming on uh, your story is intriguing you, you've uh, you've sort of gone ahead of age groups by a fair way, playing first 11 cricket at the age of 14, playing under 17 cricket at East Belmont in a in a boys team and doing particularly well. But what really got us excited and keen to have you on is uh, a 14-year-old selected in the Victorian under 19 team. That really made this interview a no-brainer for us. So uh, how's that um, selection sat with you this week? Well, um, I was definitely very excited when I found out and I was pretty shocked as well because, um, you know, being only 14 and selected in the under-19s, it's, it's amazing and I've never, I never thought it would, well, happen, so I was really excited. Have the selectors spoken to you about your selection? Have, have they mentioned that, that, that you're, you're a project player or, or you're a very big part of what, what the plans are? Is, is that all been spoken with you yet? Um, not yet, but I'm pretty sure I'll be very good at carrying the drinks when I get <laughs> Yeah, Rob and I got plenty of experience with that at a much lower level, let much, me be very much, clear. Much lower. Uh, no, it's been a, a big year for you. You had a, a really good carnival about mid-season where you, you, some of your performances there probably got the state selectors noticing. Um, but let's go back to the the key part, well, to the East Belmont Cricket Club where it started for you. How long have, has, has cricket been uh, a part of your desire, sporting desire? Well, up until about three years ago, I never really played. But then my brother started playing for East Belmont and I went down to one of his games and one of the mums said they're getting a women's team started up if I wanted to come down and try. So I, I went down with my sister and it all kind of started from there. I just fell in love and just kept going back and all of a sudden I was in their women's team for that season and then they asked if I wanted to play in their under-15s team and so I was playing senior women's on a Sunday and under-15s on a Saturday. What's uh, really been amazing for me is how um, how natural a cricketer you look. A lot of the young girls that start off uh, at a late age, um, their, their batting style and bowling action does require a lot of work because it hasn't been a natural thing. You look like you've been playing cricket all your life. Did, did you have someone you modelled yourself on early with your bowling action? Well, my dad taught me like the basics of bowling when I was really young, just like in backyard cricket with my brother. But um, Dad and I have been working on getting my action looking like Brett Lee's. Yeah, well, you've done a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because it looks a very a lot like um, Geelong, um, Geelong Cricket Club legend Mark Carson uh, mentioned to me when he saw you for the first time. That's what he saw. Uh, never knew anything about your your background. Just saw you run into bowl and went, "Oh my goodness, that uh, that girl's got a very good action." And he did think that you'd modelled it pretty well. He's quite excited about uh, your future. Uh, has he and other uh, key people at Geelong been a, a big assistance with your action? Um. Like I said, my dad and I have kind of been working on it, my action the most, but Mark has come down to maybe three or four trainings during the season and just giving me a couple of tips, which has been really helpful. And, um, yeah. So, Bronte, um, you spoke about your brother. Is he older? Uh, yes. Yeah. It, I, I am also younger than my brother, and uh, I was a much better bowler than I was batsman. And I reckon it comes down to the fact that big brothers bully you into, and like bully's harsh, you know what I mean, encourage, yeah. the, that's a better word, encourage a younger sibling to bowl because then they can go and practice their batting, right? Because batting is much more fun for them than bowling. And I reckon there's an element of that. Um, if you're listening, folks, and you're a second born in the family, pick up a ball, your brother or your sister will love you for it. Yes. 
So was there a lot of backyard cricket in the Leishman household? Actually, we were just playing just before. Um, and we rudely interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, there's been a lot of backyard cricket. Um, to make it harder, the past few months I've been taping the ball up to get it swinging a while and <laughs> using the um, skinny training bat so it's not as easy just to get smashed around. <laughs> Nice. Well, where we used to play, we had a downhill driveway where I used to live, and the backyard had a um, a fence, and there was a gate that if you hit, if you hooked the ball, it went through the gate, and that's where the runs were. So my brother and I were both fierce hookers because that's <laughs> that's where it was. Couldn't cut the ball to save myself, but that's okay. Uh, Bronte, how have you had to handle all the training around your your requirements for school? Is is it um, something you just really excitedly look forward to, or sometimes is is it difficult to get the balance? Um, no, it's been pretty good. Um, Geelong and East have been pretty flexible with my training. I kind of just let the coaches know if I'm allowed to bowl that night or if I'm not allowed to, and they'll just, like, modify training. Maybe I'll just field that night or just have a bat for a bit longer. Yeah. I bet you your teammates are pleased when you can't bowl. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. So, so just uh, wind, wind the clock forward a little bit for us. You, you're sitting at home a week or two or four ago and a mobile phone number pops up on your phone and you think I don't know that number and it's a person ringing you up to say you're being chosen for Victoria um, <laughs> did you have any inkling at all as to what was coming or is it a, was a complete and like as though someone rang me and told me I was playing for Victoria well um I knew that I was going to select the teams that day but I never thought I'd get in I was um I was at school actually and i I was just kind of waiting till I got home to ask Dad if I got in because I didn't know how to how to check. And then I found out, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was not expecting that at all. I go back uh, a long, long, long time ago when I was a school teacher, and I had a kid in my class um, when I was doing my teaching rounds, and uh, he came in the next morning and said, "I didn't do my homework last night," and I said, "Oh, really?" I hope you've got a good reason. He said, yes, I got a phone call to say I'm now part of the Young Talent team on a television program called Young Talent Time. I suspect you had a good excuse not to do your homework that night. <laughs> yeah, my I told my teacher at school as well, and he was just as excited as I was. <laughs> uh, Bron, have you got your um, eye on the Australian women's team? Do you watch the, their games? Because they've really shot to prominence uh with with some really good television coverage and good performances in the last three to five years. Have you got a few stars in that team you follow? Yes. Um, Elise Perry has always been my favourite player in the Australian team. Um, but Megan Schutt is, always, is also good as well because I like watching her bowl. I was driving around one Sunday afternoon and... Uh, listening to the ABC Sport and there was a young lady come on, she was interviewed, it was a very similar story to yours, she'd just been selected as an 18 year old to play to travel to New Zealand with the Australian team, her name's Darcy Brown she's had 18 months of pretty good performances, she's now very much the the go to new ball bowler, have you followed her career with interest because I see a few parallels when, when she was interviewed on the radio and how she started playing cricket with her brothers and and, and got into the team and, and found she was okay and then all of a sudden these state selections happened and you're 14 now but her story started at a very similar age. Is she someone you've got a bit of an eye on? Yes, yeah, I love watching Darcy Brown. Um, she's only young too so it's amazing what she's been able to achieve, um, with, especially with the ball. Um, yeah, well, she's actually set out what I would say is a realistic pathway for you. All of a sudden, you can, without getting too far ahead of yourself, at least you know. She come from country South Australia, um, out in a, a little bush town somewhere. So it's not as if she was in the Adelaide. capital city. <laughs> no, not like Adelaide. So her story, I, I was thinking when, when you made this selection, how, how much of a parallel her start is to yours. And it must give you the confidence that you're in a system now where you'll get the best opportunity to be the best you can be. So really, it's it's entirely up to you as to what happens from now. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of opportunities now in the past few years that weren't there before. Like um, Stephen Field and Sarah Pike have um, got the, the Puma squad started for girls around Victoria, and it's a really good squad to get them going and then hopefully get into the... Emerging players program, and then see how they go from there. 
Because I think the other one, without wanting to put any pressure on you, that I was saying to Rob just before when we were talking about you during the last song, um, I can remember, uh, it must be 10, 15 years ago now, I've lost track of time, but when you get to our age, that happens. Um, and I was listening to a radio program, and they introduced a girl who was 14, I think in year eight, would that be right? You are in year eight? Yes. And she had just been selected for the firsts at Carey. Now, Carey being one of the, the most exclusive private schools in Melbourne, she'd been picked to play in the uh, Carey firsts, and it was a boys' team, but that was before they had a girls' team. And they pumped her tyres up and said that she was, you know, at 14, fancy being able to be... And I think she'd been picked in the Victorian uh, women's squad as well. Her name's Meg Lanning. <laughs> So, uh, again, as Rob said, we're not putting pressure on at all, but what we are saying is that if the pathway is there and you're keen enough, they literally can get to the top of your game. Yes. Um, well, obviously I'd love to play for Shea one day. Like, it's, it's every kid's goal, but um, just to enjoy it. And the pathways are there. It's mm. shouldn't be there. It's just if I work hard enough and, yeah, uh, Bronte, has the pathway for your commitment to the under-19 squad been laid out yet as to, to your trainings and, and games and tournaments in the next few months? Well, I, there's a couple of trainings with the under-19s just before we leave, but I'm not too sure what happens after that yet. I think it's just um, off-season training and then pre-season will start again before the season starts. So, so when is the when is the national carnival when you'll you'll actually be playing for Victoria against the other states? Well, we fly off on the sixth of April, and then we come home on the fifteenth. So it's just a week of big tournament. And is that a uh, mixed games, uh, a mixture of twenty twenty fifty over, and maybe even longer forms? They haven't actually released the um, the timetables yet, um, but I'm pretty sure it'll just be. One day is every day, so... 50 over games? Yes. Yeah. Whereabouts is it being held? Um, Adelaide. They haven't um, told us whereabouts yet. Yeah, but you know you're on a plane to Adelaide. That's a good starting point. Yeah. That is yeah. a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bronte, we congratulate you again. It's a, it's a wonderful story. It's one of many really good stories around this region with women's cricket. I, I mentioned to you off-air about Grace Jones. She's playing... In a grand final today for Armstrong Creek in a in a men's competition, she's earned the right and and very much so. She's taken 17 wickets this year with her leg spin. She's earned her stripes, and provides a real a real chance for others like you to to be the best player you can be in any environment you want to be in. And that in the society we're living in today is a great thing. And you're one of those pioneers. So congratulations, good luck in the tournament, and uh, certainly for the future, we'll be following you with interest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And don't forget, when that day does come and they introduce you on the TV as Australian (laughs) captain, Bronte Leishman, don't forget to say my first ever radio interview was with the two blokes chatting in Geelong. Okay. All right, because we we discovered you. (laughs) (laughs) No pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, Bronte, and also, uh, I guess um, at this particular stage, I had a chat to your mum yesterday, the the commitment your parents have made to to make all this happen. I I guess you want to be thankful to them as well? Yes. Mum and Dad have driven me up to Melbourne and back, up to Melbourne and back almost every week, and it's been a huge commitment from them. So, big thank you to them. And you're now learning how to do homework sitting in the back seat of the Ford Territory. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Cameron, work, White used, Cameron White used to go from Bensdale to Melbourne three nights a week, so uh, he had parents okay. the same. Yeah, there's great stories around with parents. So, good, uh, best wishes to your parents and all the others who support the uh, the children who are going around doing the best they can in any sport. We uh, very, very much admire your work. Bronte, best wishes and thanks again. Thank you for having me. Can you, Bronte?